Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 45. In this video, we're going to learn about factoring polynomials using substitution. So in some cases, we can factor a more complex polynomial by making a substitution. So I want to jump right in and just look at an example here. So let's suppose you see 7x to the fourth power plus 20x squared plus 12, and you're asked to factor this. Well, you might look back at me and say, well, I don't know how to do that. I'm used to seeing something that looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Now I've got something times x to the fourth power plus something times x squared plus some constant. So the way this works, if you look at this particular problem, I could rewrite this, and I just have to show this to you, as 7x squared that's squared. Now if I take x squared and I square it, what do I have? I have x to the fourth power. So I haven't changed anything, I just rewrote it. Then plus 20x squared, then plus 12. Now the benefit or the reason to writing it like this, you see that I have an x squared here and an x squared here. So what if I made a substitution and I let a variable be equal to or the same as my x squared? So that variable could be whatever you want. You could use y or z or q or n or whatever you want to do. Let's just go ahead and use u. So u is going to be equal to x squared. So that means everywhere I see an x squared, I'm going to plug in a u. So let me erase this. We don't need this anymore. And so I'm going to rewrite this problem as 7. I have an x squared there, so I'm going to write a u. Then that's squared, so 7u squared, plus we'd have 20. Then I have an x squared, so that's going to be a u. Then plus, I have 12. So now, if I look at this right here, it matches a format that I'm familiar with. Okay, Very easy to factor this. We just talked about it. We can use reverse FOIL if we want, or we can also use a method that relies on factoring by grouping. I prefer to use factoring by grouping, so let's go ahead and factor this guy. I would want two integers whose product is 7 times 12. That's 84. So the product is going to be 84. And then the sum is what? The sum is to that middle coefficient. So a sum of 20. So think about factors of 84. You think about 84, it's what? You got 1 times 84. That's obviously not going to work, right? Because the two integers have to sum to 20. Then you've got 2 and 42. That wouldn't work. You've got 3 times 28, which wouldn't work. 4 times 21, which wouldn't work. It's not divisible by 5, but it is divisible by 6. It's 6 times 14. Now, 6 and 14 sum to 20, so that's your magical combination there. So let's erase this. We know what we need. Let's erase this. So we take those two integers, and we rewrite the middle term. So I would say that I have 7u squared plus, I'll put 14u, plus, I'll put 6u, and then plus 12. Now I'm going to factor using grouping. So I'm going to take the GCF out of each group. So from the first two, I'm going to pull out a 7u, and that's going to leave me with what? I'd have a u plus a 2. From the second group, I'm going to pull out a 6, and I'm going to have a u plus a 2. So I can pull out the common binomial factor of u plus 2, and that's going to give me what? That's going to give me u plus 2, that quantity, times what's left. I'd have 7u there, plus I'd have 6 there. So u plus 2, that quantity, times the quantity 7u plus 6. So if I'm taking a test or I'm doing my homework and I'm asked to factor this, can I report this as my answer? No. I made a substitution to make it easy on myself, so I've got to substitute back in the end. If u is equal to x squared, that means I can take every u that I have, okay, so there's a u here and here, and I can replace it with x squared. So I can say that my answer is what? It's x squared plus 2, that quantity, times the quantity 7. Again, you've got a u there, so x squared plus 6. So I have factored this 7x to the fourth power plus 20x squared plus 12 as the quantity x squared plus 2 times the quantity 7x squared plus 6. Again, just using a simple substitution. Right, let's take a look at another example. 
So we have 27x to the 6th power minus 54x cubed plus 15. So before we do anything, we should notice that everything here is divisible by 3. So I want to make sure I pull that out so I don't forget about it or have additional factoring in the end. So if I pulled out a 3 to start, this 27 would now be a 9. I'd still have my x to the 6th power. Then minus 54 divided by 3 would be 18. Then x cubed. Then plus, we know 15 divided by 3 is 5. So this is what I'm working on now. I just want to factor what's inside the parentheses. Now, again, we can use a substitution. If you look at what we normally try to factor, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. You think about this exponent as a 1, this exponent as a 2. So this exponent here is double this exponent here. In the last example we looked at, we had an exponent that was a 4, which was double the exponent of a 2. In this example here, you have an exponent of a 6 that's double the exponent of a 3. So when this occurs, you can use a substitution. Okay, And you're going to take a variable, let's say u or q or n or whatever you want to do. Let's just say z for this example. So let's say z. That's going to be equal to the variable raised to the smaller power. So z is equal to x cubed in this case. Now, since this exponent is double this one, what I can do using my rules of exponents, I can rewrite this. I'll put three times, it's out of parentheses, 9x cubed, so you want to match that, but I'm doubling this exponent. So I'm just going to raise it to the second power, right, or square it. By the rules of exponents, x cubed squared would be x to the sixth power. Then you'd have minus 18x cubed, then plus 5. And the reason you write this this way is so it's obvious what you're going to do when you substitute. Here's x cubed, and here's x cubed. So what I'm going to end up doing when I make my substitution, I'm going to say that I have 3 times, inside of parentheses, 9. This right here will be replaced with a z. z equals x cubed. I have x cubed right there, so that would be z and then squared. Then minus, I have 18 times. Here comes x cubed again, so I'm going to substitute with a z, and then plus 5. So all I have to do now is just factor this as I normally would. Once I'm done, I go back and I resubstitute, and I have my answer. So give me two integers whose sum is negative 18. So the sum is negative 18, and whose product, okay, whose product is 9 times 5, or 45. Now, we know from the rules of signs that this has to be a negative and another negative. Negative plus negative is negative. Negative times negative is positive. So I'm thinking about negative values. But in thinking about that, I can just think about positives and then just switch over. So think about the factors of 45. You've got 1 and 45, which obviously wouldn't work. It's not even, so it's not divisible by 2. It's 3 and 15. 3 times 15 would be 45. Now, what's interesting here is 3 plus 15 is 18, but I just want negatives involved, so I would think about negative 3 and negative 15. That's what I want. Negative 3 times negative 15 is positive 45. Negative 3 plus negative 15 is negative 18. So I'm going to use those two integers to rewrite my middle term. Okay, so let me erase this. And I'm going to say that this is equal to, we're going to have 3 times, inside of parentheses, 9z squared minus 15z minus 3z plus 5. And so I'm going to use factoring by grouping in the middle here. I'm going to have my 3 out in front. From the first group, the first two, I could pull out a 3z. So pull out a 3z. That would leave me with a 3z minus a 5. Then in the second group, I have negative 3z and I have 5. Well, if I look at trying to get a common binomial factor, I just want opposite signs. Right? I want positive 3z and negative 5. So just pull out a negative 1. Pull out a negative 1. You can change the signs. This would be 3z. This would be negative 5. And so now I have that common binomial factor that I'm looking for, this 3z minus 5. So I can take that and factor it out. I'd have a 3 out in front, factor out the quantity 3z minus 5, and it would be multiplied by what's left. You'd have a 3z here, 
minus a 1 here. So this factors into 3 times the quantity 3z minus 5 times the quantity 3z minus 1. Now, am I done with this problem? No. I substituted to get here, so I've got to substitute to finish this up. So let me erase this, and I can kind of move things up. All right, so we know that we substituted a z for x cubed. So everywhere there's a z, I can just go back and put x cubed. It's just that simple, x cubed here and x cubed here, and I'm going to have my answer for the original problem. So it would be 3 times the quantity 3x cubed minus 5, times the quantity 3x cubed minus 1. And again, if you don't believe me, go ahead and FOIL this out. You'll get a result. Multiply that result by 3, and you'll get back to 27x to the 6th power minus 54x cubed plus 15. All right, so let's take a look at another one. So I just want to show you another scenario where you can use substitution. We have 4 times the quantity x minus 5 squared minus 4 times the quantity x minus 5 minus 15. So if someone said, go ahead and factor this, again, you might have a little bewildered look on your face. But again, if you see something that's common, like the quantity x minus 5, I can just replace that with a variable. So I can say, hey, I can let u, or let's just go ahead and do q. I can let q be equal to the quantity x minus 5. So everywhere I see an x minus 5, I could replace it with a q. So what would that give me? Well, I'd say 4q squared minus 4q minus 15. Can I factor this? Yes, I can. I can find two integers whose product is negative 60. So the product is negative 60 and whose sum is negative 4. So the sum is negative 4. So we're going to have to think about this a little bit more because we have a negative product. So that means we have one positive integer and one negative integer. So let's think about some combinations that we can do. So for factors of 60, I'm going to throw out things like 1 times 60 or 2 times 30. They're too far away. Then next you'd have 3 times 20, also too far away. You've got 4 times 15. That wouldn't work. You've got 5 and 12. That wouldn't work. Then you come to 6 and 10. So if I had 10 minus 6, that would give me 4. But I want negative 4, so I'd have to put positive 6 and negative 10, and that would give me a negative 4. So I'm looking for a negative 10 and a positive 6. Negative 10 times 6 is also negative 60. So let's use these integers to rewrite that middle term. Let's erase this and say that we have 4q squared minus 10q plus 6q minus 15. So if I use my factoring by grouping, I can pull out a 2q from the first group. That would leave me with 2q minus 5. From the second group, I can pull out a 3. So plus 3 times, you'd have 2q minus 5. So if I factor out the common binomial factor, I'd have the common 2q minus 5. That's pulled out and then times what's left, which is 2q plus 3. So this is my factorization, but again, I'm not done because q is representing x minus 5. So let me erase this up here, and I'm going to substitute. So inside of parentheses, I have 2. Remember, q is the quantity x minus 5. Make sure you use parentheses there, very, very important, because 2 is multiplying this whole thing, then minus 5. Then times, you have 2q, so 2 times the quantity x minus 5, and then plus 3. All right, so let's erase this, and we would think about this. So if I go through and kind of simplify, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 5 is minus 10, and then minus 5. Well, negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15, so let's write 2x minus 15. And then for this one, 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, and then you have plus 3. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. So I have factored this into 2x minus 15, that quantity, times the quantity 2x minus 7. Now, you might sit there and say there's no way that this is the factorization of this. 
but in fact it is. And I'm just gonna put this off to the side and I'm going to prove that to you. And let's say you were to look at this problem and say, okay, I can't start out by just using the distributive property. I've got to expand this. So I would have four times, we know how to do this from our special products formulas. This would be x squared minus two times x times five. Two times five is 10. So we'd have 10x and then plus this guy squared. Five squared is 25. So let me just stop and do the four times this. This would be four x squared minus 40 x plus 100. Okay, so let me just erase this. Now, for this one, I have a negative four times this. It's not squared or anything, so I can just use my distributive property. Negative four times x is negative four x, and then negative four times five is plus 20, and then you have minus 15. Okay, so we have four x squared, Nothing to combine with that. I've got negative 40x minus 4x, that's minus 44x. And then I've got 100 plus 20, which is 120, minus 15, which is positive 105. Now, let me erase this. And you could do one of two things now. You could factor this into this, or you could foil this into this. Let's go ahead and foil this into this because it's a little bit quicker. So 2x times 2x would be 4x squared. The outer, 2x times negative 7 would be negative 14x. The inner, negative 15 times 2x would be negative 30x. And then the last, negative 15 times negative 7 is positive 105. So if you combine like terms in the middle here, you see that you would get 4x squared minus 44x plus 105, which is exactly what you have right there. So just a much quicker way to factor Think about having to factor this versus what we factored. It was quicker in the end, right? Just to make the substitution and then go back.